Hey folks, welcome back. Like everyone else, I've used Minions on my bikes. Minion DHR2 front and rear, DHR2 rear with Minion DHF front. But these days we have the Maxxis Dissector. Is this any good front or rear? Let's check it out. These tires were designed by Maxxis with help from Troy Brosnan and the sector is supposed to give us better rolling resistance than the Minions and you can see these uh, cornering knobs being well supported, very similar to that uh, Minion DHF. They do exist in 27.5 and 29 variants. This is the 2.4 Max Terra or triple compound, uh, tubeless ready and EXO sidewall protection. This is more of a trail version of the tire. They do have a downhill version that uses Max Grip and beefier sidewalls. All that info is also printed here on the right side of the sidewall and you see triple compound, Max Terra, EXO and tubeless ready. On the other side you're gonna see this directional arrow because like most of Max's tires these are directional and here there's a lot more information about this dissector. First of all this is made in Taiwan. This is designed as a rear tire that's what it says here online you're gonna see that they talk about front or rear. Tubeless ready, 60 TPI casing, they have 120 as well. This is a tire for hard pack, loose over hard and medium. And the key features here are usually very confusing, so I'm not gonna try to explain that. And 2.4 WT means wide trail casing that's optimized for internal dimension rims from 30 to 35 millimeters. I assume anything above a stance arch would be fine with these tires. Weight of the 2.4 Max Terra as well as dual compound is supposed to be 915 grams. Here's your 950 for the first tire. My second tire is right at 990, so I'm a bit disappointed by that because that's only 25 grams less than this DHF, which is 1015 grams. This is a DHF dual compound 2.5, by the way and that makes it 200 to 250 grams heavier than this DHR2. This is an older tire in 2.3, but uh, with quite impressive weight. I'm installing mine on this M1900 wheel set that I reviewed on my channel recently, and they come with a 30 millimeter ID or internal dimension. And the height of this rim is 20 millimeters. Installing the tire on the wheel set, it's fairly simple even with bare hands. Start the opposite side of the valve and make sure you keep the tire in the channel. Then you're just gonna pull it over with your hands like this. Here it goes. And just repeat this on the other side. Remember, start the opposite side of the valve. Here on the right side sidewall, you're gonna get this maximum pressure mentioned by Maxxis, 35 to 50 PSI. In order for this uh, tire to stretch properly, when you get it installed, I would inflate it to that maximum pressure of 50 PSI and just leave it overnight. And I set these up tubeless from the get-go and this year I started using mock-off no puncture sealant. It seems to be better than stands that I've been using for the last five years. I don't know if you guys have any experience with it. So here there are DHF next to DHR2 dissector on the right and from the get-go you can see the L-shape cornering knobs on DHF DHR2. They are not used for the dissector. This has more of a classical uh, shoulder knobs uh, similar to this uh, in between knobs on the more aggressive tires. However, the rolling knobs here in the center are tapered just like they are on the DHR2 and they do offer, they should offer quite a decent braking performance. You see all those surfaces, not as uh, good as DHR2, which is the master of braking. Just like the other tires, you have two types of cornering knobs alternating, same thing with a rolling uh, surface here at the center, two types of uh, knobs and the knobs are pretty tall, very similar to DHF. DHF is well known for this channel in between the cornering knobs and the rolling knobs. You see it pretty clear here. DHR2 doesn't really have it as pronounced, it's just a tiny channel. 
and then you look at dissector this looks pretty much like the DHF you see that pronounced channel on both sides meaning that you might need a bit more of an aggressive lean of the bike to make these knobs really bite into the dirt the widest part of the tire is cornering knob to cornering knob and you can see almost 62 millimeters which is 2.43 inches this is 2.4 again this tire stretched for a few days at 45 psi's casing alone is at 60 millimeters which is the 236 inches wide casing height is about 54 millimeters remember my rim is 20 millimeters and the rolling knobs here are about four millimeters tall in contrast to the cornering knobs are about six millimeter tall both center and the cornering knobs are very similar to a dhf in that regard keep in mind that this is a pretty tall and wide tire in the 2.4 version check the clearance in the back of your bike before you jump on it as a rear tire I have two of these tires installed, both on 30 millimeter rims. This is installed as a front tire on my uh, Yeti. The second one is installed as a rear tire. And we had the chance to ride these tires in all kinds of terrains, from loose to hard pack, to slightly greasy or muddy terrain. Baldy recon race shows the lack of grip. My front, no problem. A lot of prong right here. Again, a lot. Woo! Man, that's fun. Is this dissector the perfect trail tire? It could be. Front is grippy and it's really good. I mean, hard to tell the difference between this and DHF in the conditions that I have over here. As a rear tire, I run it in all kinds of conditions, super grippy as well, but most importantly, it's not as draggy as the DHR2. So overall, pretty happy with the dissector. I wish it was a bit lighter, but other than that, for me, it's gonna be my trail tire, an aggressive front, or a good rolling rear tire. Hope you found this useful and if you did don't forget to like subscribe comment let me know if you're using the dissector front rear front and rear would love to hear from you guys and until next time hope to see you on the trails cheers guys cheers